Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. The story of the Integrity Commission and how the commission has handled the report and the ruling in relation to the investigation into Westcon Construction Limited and connections to Prime Minister Andrew Holness. That story is, has what we call in the news business legs. It has just kept going and almost every day there's been some kind of new revelation. We want to look at where we are now and where we need to move forward on this very important issue. And I have Joining me in studio, Daniel Archer, attorney at law and a director of Watchdog Group National Integrity Action, as well as opposition senator Damian Crawford. Joining me on Zoom, civil society advocate Carol Narcisse. I should say we did invite a government representative. That invitation was declined. Before we start discussion, though, let's take a look at what's been happening over the past week or so. On Tuesday, February 14, a report from the Director of Investigation of the Integrity Commission was tabled in Parliament. The investigation concerned contracts awarded to a company called Westcon Construction Limited between 2006 and 2009. The investigation looked at whether Prime Minister Andrew Holness, Member of Parliament for St. Andrew West Central, then Education Minister, had been involved in the award of contracts to the company. This was in relation to recommendations he made regarding Westcon and Robert Garvin, a director of Westcon, known to Mr. Holness for over 20 years and who had been employed both in Mr. Holness's personal business and in his constituency. The report recommended in part that, quote, the matter concerning the potential conflict of interest, which arose in relation to the recommendations made by the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, is being referred to the Director of Corruption Prosecution for consideration with respect to breaches of the Contractor General Act, the Public Sector Procurement Regulations 2008, the Corruption Prevention Act, and or any other applicable law. There was immediate concern. Executive Director of the Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal, JAMP, Jeanette Calder, spoke on this program last week. Well, it's serious on different levels, Dion. Thanks for having me. It's serious because of the uh, potential damage it does on an uh, individual level, the person, the office of the Prime Minister, and certainly the country. We're still reeling from what has happened uh, concerning SSL and what that has done internationally, only to now be presented with a headline such as this. Today. Professor Trevor Monroe of Watchdog Group National Integrity Action called for, quote, vigorous, comprehensive and prompt determination of whether such breaches occurred or not. Opposition leader Mark Golding called for Prime Minister Andrew Holness to step aside. Mr. Holness cannot credibly remain in office as Prime Minister of our country in these circumstances. I am, there, there, I am therefore calling on the Prime Minister to do the right thing for Jamaica. He must now, at a minimum, take away himself on a leave of absence until this matter is finally resolved. Then, on Thursday, two days after the report had been tabled in Parliament, came a ruling from the Integrity Commission's Director of Corruption Prosecution that, quote, no criminal charges be laid against Mr. Holness as there was, quote, no evidence of the alleged interference with the procurement process. The calls for action against the Commission were swift. In a two-page statement, the Integrity Commission said it, quote, rejects any assertion that there has been any misstep in the proceedings, saying, quote, every effort is made to follow the provisions of the law strictly. They said they couldn't publish the ruling before or at the same time as the investigation report based on Section 53.3 of the Integrity Commission Act. This section says, quote, until the tabling of a report in Parliament, all matters under investigation by the Director of Investigation or any other person involved in such investigation shall be kept confidential, and no report or public statement shall be made by the Commission or any other person in relation to the initiation or conduct of the investigation. Now, here's a timeline as stated by the Commission. January 12, the Director of Corruption Prosecution submits her ruling to the Commission. February 14, the report of the investigation 
Brown was tabled in Parliament. February 15, the Commission got the official confirmation of the tabling and ordered the release of the ruling. And February 16, the ruling was published. But the statement from the Integrity Commission has only intensified the criticism. Okay, and some of the criticism, for instance, the private sector organization of Jamaica has been scathing, said the Integrity Commission's explanation was not credible, that the commission has to prove that it had no malicious intent. Also said if the commission can't give a credible explanation, the government must do what's necessary to ensure the commission is put in a position so people have confidence in them once again. And the president, Metro Siago, was quoted as saying, if it is that the prime minister needs to ask the governor general to make some changes, I don't know. We'll talk about the whole issue of termination a little later. But Justice Minister Deroy Chuck called for swift action against the people responsible. He said, quote, heads must roll. Former Prime Minister Bruce Golding in a column in The Observer called their actions egregious. He called the explanation of the commission and the interpretation of Section 53.3 quote unquote hogwash and he said the integrity commission has been found wanting it has messed up and that corrective action is necessary if its important purpose is to be preserved so let me start out by asking all my guests the same question um daniel archer let me start with you are the criticisms warranted in the absence of information anything and everything can be said and i think where you start looking at the section the gag clause is a good place it's often been said that silence breeds mistrust and it yields distrust. And I think what has happened this week reveals to us why it is important that we should have not had this gag clause, that we should have had something in place where in keeping with the Jakarta principles that govern anti-corruption agencies, that you speak to the public over time so that people know what is happening. And that for me is the essential, the essential problem. The fact that there is a gag clause which has been in place that has prevented them from indicating anything at all. And if you listen to what you said at the opening, having received confirmation of the tabling, they then released the ruling. So the question to you is, and to the public, since we don't have much information on the legislation and many of us don't understand it, clearly there needs to be some education, why hasn't anyone asked for the courts to interpret Section 53.3? Parliament makes laws, correct? In faculty, we learn this little adage. The legislatures make law, the courts interpret the law. Since everyone is, has their own view as to what the gag clause says, why not seek an interpretation and make a decision from that? And this is why I lay that down. We're the only country that has a gag clause when we're talking about anti-corruption agencies like the Integrity Commission. It might be that the situation has allowed us now to see what happens when they cannot speak. I tell you what, I'm going to come back to that because I think that point about asking the court for, for a ruling is extremely important. But I'm already on record as saying, let's accept the commission's interpretation of, of the gag clause as is. I don't think that meant they, they needed to act the way they act acted. I don't think it needed 48 hours for them to put out this ruling. I, I absolutely reject that. I'm all, already on record as saying that. So I'll just well, say that well, to you. But the, the, I hear point, you. I, the point you're making about asking for an interpretation to put that matter to rest is valid. I take you from that point then and I bring you a little bit further. Since it is that the aim of the Integrity Commission and when you look at the objectives, the objectives is to provide transparency, confidence that there's an entity that is combating corruption and doing all that is necessary then we do need to hear from them. And we do need to hear from them, not in the silos of the different interviews, but as Naya has articulated and has asked for, let us hear from you in a press conference or summon them to the Parliamentary Oversight Committee and pose the questions to them so hold, that we can understand thought. where they're going. Hold that thought. Going to come back to that. And Naya being National Integrity. Naya Action. being NIA, yes. Opposition Senator Damon Crawford, are the criticisms warranted? I because think, you guys have some egg on your face, as, as Daniel was saying last <laughs> oh, No, I don't think I so. I um, anyone. <laughs> I, I really don't think so. Um, I think that they... What uh, do you mean, really, man, big really, bad call to step aside, and then think, 12 hours later, no. it's like, eeks, draw bricks. Yeah, well, well, different information came in. Um, the Prime Minister would have had to step aside if, if an investigation would have led to prosecutorial matters for which he is the head of the state. Then thereafter, we found out that there would have been no process 
to decide if there will be prosecution because that process has already ended. Okay, I take, a, that I take your point and I, I, I don't know. want to, but I've also, already introduced a red yes, herring, so let yes, me draw you. Right, point. but, 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 but it's a very important point you also made because even though it was found that it didn't reach a standard to face the court, doesn't mean it didn't reach a standard to face the public. The public may still need an but explanation. We're going to come to that because that's good. another point. All right, so let me speak to the Integrity Commission. I think that um, it's exaggerated, but it's warranted. I believe that they were at best unkind. I, th I Actually, clearly I believe they were unkind, but I don't believe that when I read their report, their, their response, that they were incorrect. Um, and again, um, the court might say how it should it be interpreted, but they have stated a reasonable possibility of how it could be interpreted. Senator, you confuse me. Okay. You say exaggerated but warranted, and then you said at best you think they've been unkind. Right, so, so they're being... No, what, what, so, okay, so, so let, let me perhaps I was unclear, right. so let me be so, a little bit more clear. Yes. The criticisms about how the Integrity Commission acted last yes. week and the, including suggestions that the actions were so egregious that perhaps they needed to step aside. Are those criticisms warranted? And, okay, so <laughs> you have direction and distance. I think that the criticism, being criticized is warranted. I believe that the level that is going that, oh my God, is, is not reasonable. Because as I said, tabling it together would have given the public sufficient information to come to their own conclusion. They said they couldn't table right. it together. So, 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 and that is the basis upon which I say, well, they have a reasonable excuse of their interpretation. And so if we disagree with their interpretation, could that interpretation have been had? And I think it could have been had. Um, and that is why we're saying go to the court, um, as, as was saying, to see if that interpretation was correct. All right, hold but on, I don't hold believe on it's hogwash, as some people said. Going to, going to come back to all of that, but Carol Narcisse want to just um, bring you in before I go to break. So quickly for you, yes. criticism is warranted? I think concern is warranted. Um, what happened, what it caused in the society and beyond the society, the the fact that we didn't know what the reasoning of the commissioners what that reasoning was until they issued a statement um understandably led to consternation concern critique why you couldn't just release the two things at once uh, etc as more information has come to us i think we have the choice now of either taking a position that says we don't want to be confused by facts or we don't want to be confused by any explanation that they give us. We just want to hold on to the, throw the baby out with the bathwater view. Um, I don't think anyone can um, credibly argue uh, maliciousness. Um, I don't think anyone has, except where they're conflating uh, say, um, Mr. Christie, right, and people's preconceived notion hold, about hold, hold, hold what that motivates thought. him. Hold that thought for me, Carol Narcisse. You raise another issue there, and we have so mm. much to cover, but mm -hmm. we have to take our first break. Remember, you can WhatsApp us. It's 3810072, 3810072. Give us your first name, your general location. Tweet us at TVJ All Angles. Soon come.